Thank you very much. Uh, I have the very great privilege today of being able to launch the findings of the Thomson Reuters Foundation's uh, perception poll on the best place in the world to be a social entrepreneur. To make my life a little bit easier, we've prepared a, prepared a short video. It is short, so uh, don't, don't fall asleep or anything. But uh, a quick video to help explain a little bit more about the poll and about the findings as well. So can we cue the video, please? <laughs> came top. Uh, Canada came out top this year, uh, so it's been a big couple of days for Canada. Is this bigger than Trudeau being re-elected? I think it is. I think it is. So congratulations to Canada. Um, one of the things that you'll notice by looking at the top 10 is the fact that neither the UK nor the US appear in the top 10 this year, which I think is really interesting. And I want to speak a little bit about some of the findings that I think are really interesting and why and why a perception poll like this is really important. So, we spoke to 900 experts in 45 countries to ask them what they feel about social entrepreneurship in their home country. So these are people that live, breathe, work every day in social enterprise to help understand what they think the current sentiment is in their country. Uh, this is a perception poll. And why is that important? Why is it important that it's perception? It's important because perception is everything. Perception is the thing that moves economic markets. Perception is the thing that makes people, that, that allows people to make the decisions that they're going to make. Social entrepreneurship is about encouraging people to do things differently, to do business differently, to treat business as usual as something new, to act differently. And for that, perception is incredibly important. And so this is why we've done a perception poll. Effectively, when you ask people about their perception, this is, this is the zeitgeist of society. This is trying to work out what society feels about a key issue. So what can we learn from a perception poll? Because of the data that we've got and because of the fact that there's been some interesting changes this year, there's real opportunities, particularly in events like this, where there are people from all over the world, to try and help understand what is best practice, what does it look like, what is it that different markets can share with each other, that people can learn, what is it the Global South can teach the Global North, what is it that we can learn, how can we get collaborations to make sure that we are working out what is best and how we can replicate it in different markets. So. The poll itself, we asked experts to answer questions on these six different topic areas, these six key metrics. Our view is that there is not enough data in the world about social enterprise globally. And this is why we do polls like this. Uh, for this particular poll, we, par we partnered with uh, Deutsche Bank's Made for Good program, their social enterprise program. And this is a repeat of a poll that we did in 2016. So a lot has changed between 2016 and now. And this poll allows us to, this perception poll, allows us to get a sense of what the, the heartbeat is in different countries now, what's changed, where countries are really strong, where they're weaker. And as I say, there's a lot here about what we can learn. So the poll itself is part of the Thomson Reuters Foundation's work to try and strengthen the social enterprise ecosystem. Uh, the foundation has three key focus areas. Uh, we focus on inclusive economies, media freedom, and human rights. Uh, and doing work like this perception poll on the best places in the world to be a social entrepreneur fits really neatly for us into our work in inclusive economies, where we do a lot to try and help support social enterprise and inclusive ecosystems. And that includes things like raising public awareness about social, about social enterprise, about inclusive economies. 
Um, we have daily news coverage about social entrepreneurship, and alongside that, we provide direct support to social enterprises on the ground, whether that's through free legal assistance, other types of capacity building, uh, media training, communications training. So I want to speak a little bit about some of the things that came out of the poll that I think are the most interesting. So, Canada, we know that Canada came out top, but one of the things that I think really is really interesting is the fact that the US dropped quite so much, uh, as that little video said, it was uh, over 30 places it dropped, and Mexico dropped an awful lot as well. So what is it that is happening in the Americas that means that Canada can have structure, such a strong showing, whereas its neighbors to the south are not doing quite so well? Is it that NAFTA has broken down? Probably not, because Canada is doing really well. So what is it that the US can learn about Canada's policies, about the way Canada works and operates, that it can help share? And what is it that Mexico can, do, um, can learn as well? The, the, the country that I think there's, that was most interesting from the poll itself, the perception poll, was Nigeria. So Nigeria polled really, really strongly, both in terms of um, the way that social enterprises help support women leaders and also the way that young people are getting involved in social entrepreneurship. On the women question, uh, Nigeria polled about 20 places higher this year out of the top 45 uh, economies in the world, which is a massive increase. And what is it that Nigeria is doing there? What, what is it that means that the local population um, in Lagos, in other markets in Nigeria, feel that women have a really strong role to play in social enterprise compared to in other markets. What is it that we can learn? What is it that we can do? And there are lots of people that are here at this event this week that are either from Nigeria or represent Nigeria, and I implore you, go and speak to them. Speak to them. Try and work out what is going on there. What is it that Nigeria is doing that the rest of us can learn from? Medellin in Colombia is another really interesting success story. Um, it didn't appear at all, at all in the 2016 poll, and this year has come out in the top five uh, for cities, a city hotspot for social enterprises. There's clearly really interesting work that is being done at a municipal level in Medellin, and again, like, what can other cities learn? There's lots of people that work here for local governments. What can we learn from Medellin's example? What, what is it that they're doing there that is so special that means that people in that market recognize that it's a success story, and more importantly, people in other markets understand what Medellin is doing and recognize that there's successes there as well. One of the big things about social enterprise is the feeling about, of social entrepreneurship in the market. Do, do, do local markets feel like there is momentum that is growing and building around social entrepreneurship? We've set out here the top 10 um, the, based exclusively on the question around momentum. But in Belgium, which came 37th in 2016 out of the 45 countries, Belgium is now uh, up there at number four. The Netherlands was also joint 37th last, uh, in 2016 with Belgium and has come in at 11. The UAE has risen 22 places in the ranking as well. What is it that is happening in these markets that mean that local people feel like there is real, genuine momentum, that there are more opportunities, there are more people getting involved, that there is a drive for more businesses to be acting as social enterprises? Again, these are questions that we're putting out there with this perception poll. We want people to start thinking, what can we learn from these different markets? What can we do to encourage this in our own markets as well? Now, last but not least, I wanted to speak very briefly about uh, issues to do with investment. This is SOCAP after all. This is a really key issue for, for the attendees of this conference. Um, there are three questions that we asked around, so, uh, around investment. Uh, one around grant funding, the access, um, how easy is it to access grant funding. Another around the ease of accessibility of investment. And a third around non-financial support. Now, in terms of grant funding, the top two were France and Singapore, which are very, very different markets with very different histories and attitudes towards supporting social enterprises, towards supporting social businesses. Of particular interest around investment, was the fact that three of the greatest climbers in the perception poll this year are China, Thailand, and Indonesia. So there's clearly something interesting that is happening in East and Southeast Asian markets. Again, what is it that we can learn? Is it the, um, the, the growth of the ASEAN region as a whole, the integration that's happening there? These are questions that we need to be asking, and particularly in markets like the UK and the US that had such poor showings this time around. What can we, what can we do? What can, what can we learn from Indonesia? 
And then lastly, as, uh, as a Brit and therefore dealing with whatever is happening with Brexit at the moment, um, the, the last question around non-financial support I thought was really interesting because in a reverse of what has been happening in the EU, Germany drops dramatically in the, the, the perception poll here and uh, Greece rose dramatically. Uh, given the tensions between those two markets about the dominance of Germany uh, in the EU and how Greece has been very reactive in terms of what's happening uh, in efforts to, to strengthen its economy, this again is really interesting. There's something that's happening in Greece that enables people to get far more non-financial support compared to Germany. And what is it that Germany needs to be learning from Greece as a result of this? As I said, this is a perception poll. This is about people understanding their local markets, what, what, they, what they feel is going on, and therefore, this is an understanding of what the momentum, what the enthusiasm, what the, the, the local passions are in, in markets. But this is a great opportunity for people to speak to each other from different markets. For countries that have fallen dramatically in the rankings this year, to try and understand what we can do to drive change, what we can do to get that momentum up and running again, to make sure that social enterprise, the impact investing doesn't stall, that this continues to grow, this movement continues to grow, and it continues to be the driver of reinventing capitalism. I'm going to be here all week. Come and talk to me. There's lots of work that we're doing as well. We want to be able to engage with different organizations that see this as an opportunity to drive and champion change in their own markets. And with that, I will leave you to the rest of the event. But thank you very much. Thank you.